Hey there, Scipio here, and uh, it's time to give this 500 a little bit more build love. It probably feels like the stepchild to my 450 who's getting all the attention right now. Uh, but that thing is uh, is pretty much done for what I want to do to it right now. So uh, I want to stick these uh, cyclic servos uh, into the 500. Um, and so that's what I'm going to work on now and get these things knocked out. So one of the benefits of this uh, 500 frame is that it's large enough uh, and the way that the servos are mounted, that we really don't have to worry about doing all of the uh, the ninding and centering uh, before we put them in the in the heli like we did the 450. Um, so uh, I'm just going to put them in there straight out of the bags, um, and then we will we will go to uh, the next steps of getting them uh, centered and get the servo arms put at 90 and all that stuff after the fact. Uh, but for now, I just want to get them mounted into into the heli. So let's do that. So I'm going through all the little parts uh, that I have uh, that come uh, come with this for the servo installs. I've got my backing plates. Uh, I've got some spacers here, which I'm not sure um, necessarily what application that'll be for. Um, I don't think I'm going to need it for this build, but uh, we'll see. Uh, I've got some screws, the self-threading screws that I'm going to need, um, and I've got some a couple of these bigger washers. What I don't have is the washers. I can't find them anywhere uh, in any bags that actually are called out for this application. So if you look here at the manual, uh, you can see right here uh, there is uh, some washers called out. And uh, they are 2.6 uh, inner diameter, 5.8 uh, outer diameter, and 0.6 millimeter uh, depth, you know. and I just don't have anything that matches that description, which kind of stinks because I'd really love to just put these servos in. I've got no washers at all, uh, and these servos have fairly significantly sized holes, so um, I definitely don't feel comfortable mounting them without a washer uh, because there is, uh, as you can see, not enough to hold that screw head uh, in. So it's kind of interesting that, uh, that the kit does not come with those. Um, this is the size that's actually called out, uh, and I pulled this from my 450 build. This is a, a 5.8 outer diameter uh, washer, and if I put the screw through there, and then slip that through, you can see that does give me enough bite uh, to hang on to that. Uh, mounted uh, servo. So uh, I can't explain why my kit does not have these. I don't have anything that looks like them. Unfortunately, I don't have uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 of these laying around. I need basically four per servo, and uh, I've you know got one, maybe two laying around from the 450 build. So I, I think I'm stalled right now, actually, uh, oddly enough, until I go buy some washers uh, from the local hobby store. There are these bigger, fatter washers, and I don't know what application these are for, uh, but these don't, uh, these don't make sense uh, in there either. So, you know, as I'm getting into this build, uh, you know, I'm just stuck. So uh, I guess I have to go buy some washers. And until then... Um, I don't think I can do anything with these servos just yet. All right, quick trip to the local uh, hobby store and uh, I got me a plethora of washers, a few extras just in case. Um, but now we can throw these servos into the frame. All right, so again, the servos I'm using on the cyclics are these MD752s uh, by Hinge. Uh, and the way they're gonna mount uh, these front two uh, servos. They mount from the outside in with the gear facing out and up, uh, which is different uh, than uh, than the 450 build I did uh, and makes it much easier. So as a matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and mount these guys without uh, worrying about centering the servo um, arms because I can do that after the fact. I'll have access to them uh, easily uh, after the, uh, the installation. And then also um, the rear servo 
is going to go in uh, and it's going to go inside and I'll still have room to operate and work the uh, get the uh, the servo arm 90 so I'm gonna just go ahead and mount these without any servo arms having never uh, been hooked up to uh, to any electronics and uh, and then we'll move from there all right so what we need to mount these um, are these uh, in my kit they're white these little white um, backing tabs and then we're going to use these uh, self-threading screws okay with the washer remember the washers I had to go get um, so fit a washer on uh, the screw and uh, that's going to go through the servo mounting hole which is then going to go through the frame and then screw in to this guy here so when you put this on the flat portion is going to mate up against the frame and then this is going to point uh, away from the frame just like that and no uh, no thread lock is needed here because we're screwing into plastic uh, so I'm going to uh, to screw these things down and uh, that'll be that it takes a little bit of pressure to get these started on these uh, little plastic backing pieces here Once they grab, it should go pretty easy. And initially, I'm just uh, getting it snug, not really tightening down final uh, until I can get uh, all four of these screws in. That way, I can kind of uh, fine tune the final placement. Get your bottom one in. The other good thing uh, that you may notice, or you may not, but uh, you'll notice now that I told you, is that I have uh, not put my battery uh, tray on yet. And that allows me the ability to get my fingers back in here uh, to mount these servos. These little plastic tabs, you know, are kind of a pain to get started. And uh, a good tip might be to get the screw started first uh, into the plastic tab on the countertop. So let me show you this idea. So um, what I chose to do here is just uh, mount this little uh, backing plate inside the vise. And basically what I have is, because uh, it's got these little uh, extrusions there, I can just set that inside there and just lightly tighten it uh, and it'll hold it in place. What it does is it gives me a flat surface to be able to get these screws started. Just enough. I just need a couple threads in there to open that hole up and that'll make it much easier when I get it inside the frame because it'll find those uh, threads and then uh, should go right in whenever I start uh, tightening, tightening up. So let's see how that works out. Alright, so take my pre-threaded, uh, just partially threaded backing plate. Stick it back in there. I can look through the uh, top of the frame. And of course it finds that thread fairly easily and sucks right up this last one in on this servo alright now I've got them all not quite tight I'm going to loosen them up just a quarter turn so that the servo moves freely and then basically what I'm looking at doing um, is getting it aligned. Now you can see how much space there is around this hole. Um, you can push it all to one side, you can try and center it. You use whatever method works for you. 
my opinion is I want to try and get this as straight up and down as possible. Whether or not it's to one side or the other, I don't think makes that much of a difference. Um, but uh, I know a lot of people prefer to, uh, to center it. If you want to center it uh, or get it close to center, you can try using some alignment aids. So anyway, there's a, there's a ton of ways you can do this. Um, you can use a, uh, some sort of a spacer, like a toothpick. Uh, you know, if you, if you insert the toothpick the same depth on either side, it should f sort of center that servo in the hole. Uh, you could measure it out. Let's see what that does. You could see how that sort of see how the servo is uh, nice and centered in that hole, just from from aligning with the toothpicks. You could use that method. Uh, you could measure it, um, or you could just shove them to one side or the other. I don't know how much it matters, um, quite frankly. So there we go. Um, after getting them tightened up, basically centered in the hole. Um, you know, the closer you get this, the easier it's going to be when you do your head setup. Um, so the more perpendicular this is going to be to the main shaft, which of course means uh, perpendicular to these these frame uh, slots here, uh, the better. Um, but you can always uh, you know fine tune with sub trim and uh, travel adjustments. The other thing is uh, when you tighten these up, don't over tighten them. You're going to spread uh, these little uh, I don't know claws, whatever you call them, that uh, that surround the holes. If you tighten them too far, uh, they're going to spread out. You can see that one has a little bit of a spread to it. So just keep that in mind. You want them tight so that the thing doesn't move, um, but don't put them so tight that you spread them out and break them off. Uh, so let's move on to the next uh, servo. All right, and uh, just like before, I did pre-thread these just a little bit uh, to make it easier. When I get back there and my fingers are back behind this frame, it makes it easier to get those screws started. Uh, so that, uh, for me, that's a huge benefit. That like that. And if you get them pre-threaded, once you find that hole, it'll literally start with zero effort. Uh, and then after that, it's just a matter of getting it tightened down. So I'm building away and then I realize uh, I don't have enough screws. So when I did my check for uh, washers, I didn't actually count uh, to make sure I had enough screws. So uh, I ended up going to the uh, the local hobby store and just getting a, a few of these uh, screws. They, they do have a Phillips head, which I don't really like, but what the heck, they just hold on the servos. So I think it'll be fine. Uh, but basically what I did is just found a, uh, a screw that had a similar diameter and uh, thread coarseness. So at any rate, uh, so I had to go get some more screws. But while I'm here, uh, I did want to talk a little bit about using the uh, the rubber mounting grommets. And this is a, a topic of debate amongst builders. And you know, I don't really have a full uh, realization of whether or not one is better than the other. It seems like it depends on who you ask. But uh, there may be some of you who do decide to use uh, these little rubber grommets and uh, and brass inserts. So let me talk a little bit about this while I'm uh, uh, while I'm still building. As a matter of fact, I will uh, I will undo this one servo here, and uh, and we'll mount it with grommets so you can see how that works. But basically, what the uh, the rubber grommet is designed to do, uh, essentially, is reduce vibration and act as a little bit of a buffer, uh, a shock buffer, uh, between the servo mounting uh, point and and uh, you know the frame or whatever you're mounting the servo to. So the way this works is you put your little rubber uh, grommet on the servo. Then after you do that, you put the brass sleeve through. And that's how that has to go. You can't put the rubber on and the sleeve together. Uh, the sleeve actually holds the grommet in place. So let me grab another one here. Again, grommet goes on. 
and just kind of fits in there. And then the rubber or the uh, brass sleeve will fit in. So now that I have these in, uh, I want to use my screw, but if you look, the, uh, the screw diameter is actually too wide to fit through this grommeted uh, uh, mount. So you need to use the screws that come with the servo. In this case, I've got these little silver screws that came with the servos. Basically, uh, you could slip that through and then mount your servo that way. And these screws should, should work fine through these servo nuts. Um, I'm not going to thread them through because I don't want... Uh, I don't want to have any different uh, thread uh, coarseness there mess up my threads. Uh, but that's how you would mount them. Again, it's debatable on whether or not there's value in it. There's two schools of thought. One of them is that uh, it will reduce wear and tear on your servos by giving just a little bit of shock absorption. Uh, and uh, also... Um, it seems to reduce the problem. If you tighten these too, too tight without the grommets, these uh, tabs will spread out like I showed you before. And this uh, tends to reduce that uh, tab spread. Um, so you can tighten them down without worrying about uh, spreading the tabs. Now the people that don't like to use the rubber grommets uh, suggest that uh, it allows for too much movement and, uh, and your adjustments, your fine tuning adjustments may have a little bit more play uh, because of that. It's a pretty snug fit. I don't know if it makes that much of a difference. Um, I'm gonna go with the um, fairly common route of mounting it without the rubbers, but feel free to use them if you want. Uh, I think it's totally reasonable to use the grommets, and quite frankly, uh, the only reason I'm not using the grommets is because uh, all the builds and even the manual uh, the manual doesn't show the use of grommets, so I've just kind of defaulted to not using them. Um, but feel free to use them uh, if you uh, think that there's some value in it. Who knows, maybe the next build I'll use grommets. So I'm just going to put these screws through. Uh, again, uh, when I'm done, I want to align the servo uh, inside that uh, uh, servo cut out there, the hole that I'm, I'm uh, installing it in. So these are still a little bit loose to give me some room here. And then now this is where I'm switching to these other screws I got. I could have used uh, other screws. I just kind of wanted to go with a black screw uh, that was fairly similar to the ones I had on there. Um, just so happened the hobby store didn't have any that uh, had the hex uh, head on them. And of course get my, uh, my nut in there. And I've just got the heli tipped kind of face down. I don't know if you can see that, but I'm just face down here so I can get my finger in there. These screws I have uh, screw in just... Uh, just like the other ones, a little bit shorter, but should still give me the full bite. There we go. Now I got them both started in the nut. You can flip it over and tighten them down. Let me check my uh, adjustment here. And again, I I'm looking at the light um, through the servo, you can see there, trying to just get that even, as even as I can. It's not super critical, like I said, if, if you're off just a touch, um, all that means is you use a little bit of sub trim, or maybe your servo arm uh, will end up uh, lining up better that way anyway, uh, you never know. Uh, until you get your servo arms on there, what kind of adjustment you're going to need. It stinks to have uh, 
these Phillips screws in here though. Not nearly as cool. All right, so that's in there good. Uh, so those are the uh, two front uh, right and left servos uh, mounted in. Uh, basically, uh, we're ready to move to the back. Now the back one, uh, the rear uh, elevator servo, I'm going to mount on the right side of the heli, uh, which is uh, the position that is shown in the manual. seems to be the fairly uh, common uh, uh, mounting uh, position. And with this, uh, it's going to go the other way. It's going to mount from the inside with the uh, gear pointing to the rear and the wire uh, for your servo wire coming out the rear. Uh, so it's going to go just like that. So this time we're pushing through. Um, now, a little bit strange because uh, it's going to be harder to get through here. If you have a hex driver and you're, you've got your hex screws, you're going to have a better shot at this. Um, as you can see, you can fit your hex driver all the way through the hole on, from the other servo mount. I'm basically just sliding it through and then uh, you could tighten up that. Um, I'm, I'm uh, handicapped here because uh, I've got a screwdriver, a regular, regular screwdriver. So I'm going to try this. Uh, if it gives me too much grief, I could just swap it out uh, for uh, the hex screws, maybe change out some of the servo screws, but um, I think I should be fine here. All right, and again, uh, the nut now is on the back side of this, which is the outside of the heli. And I'm just going to kind of get that started. I just barely have enough room to get in there. Any more of an angle with this Phillips head and uh, I would pull it out and uh, use a hex, hex screw that I can use my hex driver through. That really is a huge advantage to be able to slip those skinny uh, drivers through the opposite hole. Getting these lined up can sometimes be fun. Sometimes it's easier to push this screw all the way through the frame and then uh, and then push the nut on as opposed to putting the nut flush against the frame and trying to thread the screw through uh, hopefully that makes sense get the uh, get the screw flush all the way down to the frame and then uh, just line up your nut there we go All right, same as before, I'm going to check the alignment. I want them to be, uh, I'll loosen this up just a touch. I think I might have it too tight to make any adjustments. There we go. And basically what I'm looking for is the daylight uh, to be equal. This is of less concern because you're not lining it up with anything else. So as long as it looks like it's lined up, you've got equal daylight uh, across. It's pretty much what I'm going for. So it looks pretty good there. Tighten it down. All right, that looks good. So there we have uh, all three servos mounted. Uh, and the next thing we can work on is uh, getting the servo arms. Uh, and what that's going to require is uh, getting it hooked up to a receiver, getting them powered up. Um, that way we can, uh, we can get some power to them because you can't do any alignment with, uh, without powering the servos because they're not going to find their center. Um, and then uh, I've got these servo arms that came with them. 
I've got a bunch of different arms. Um, so I have some choices here on which ones to use. I get to figure out uh, what uh, what dimensions I want to use, how far away from the, the center of the servo do I want to go, and then uh, which one gets me the best uh, 90 degree. So uh, obviously we can't do this until we get power because there's no real uh, way to find center. It's going to move around. Uh, I need to get it se uh, set to center with connection to the receiver, uh, transmitter, uh, which means I need an ESC and I need a battery. So let me get that set up. I still don't have my batteries for the 500 yet. Uh, Hobby King has really uh, frustrated me. Uh, I placed an order with them. Uh, parts showed in stock. It took nearly a week for them to process them. This is out of the USA warehouse. When they went to process them, there were none in stock, and they basically you know, postponed my entire order. So I ended up canceling it and then running them through the international warehouse so that I could get my, uh, my batteries because I didn't know how long they were going to be out of stock for. So now it's just a, a wait to see how long it takes them to get here from the international warehouse. Uh, hopefully they don't show up in stock in the U.S. before I get them from the, the international. But if it works out that way, so be it. So anyway, uh, with that said, you're going to see me using uh, you know, a 450... Uh, ESC and battery, um, only because I have uh, I have them ready to go. I haven't actually wired up uh, my ESC yet uh, for uh, for this build. Uh, I have it, but I uh, I don't have it ready to go yet. I have uh, my uh, my bullets uh, on order. So so anyway, I say all that just to say that here in this next step, when we start looking at uh, getting these electronics connected up you're going to see an ESC and a battery that isn't the final uh, assembly part of the heli. Um, but it's going to work the same. It's going to give me the same benefit of power to, uh, to run the receiver, to run the servos. That's really all I need. So let's get to it. All right, so once we start messing around with electronics, we got to do some setup first with our uh, transmitter. So you'll see I have a few things here. I have a receiver. Uh, this is an AR6200. It's a DSM-2 receiver. Uh, I'm actually going to use this in the heli with a, uh, a DSM-2 satellite. Um, I need a bind plug. Um, I happen to have one now. You uh, might see in my 450 build, I did a, uh, a video on how to build your own uh, DIY bind plug. If you don't have one, go check that out. Uh, but I have a bind plug, so I'll use it. Um, I have uh, an ESC. Again, this is a 40 amp uh, for a 450 size heli. But that's okay. We're not connecting it to a motor anyway. I just need to power up uh, the uh, the receiver, and then I have my battery off of my uh, 450 uh, that we'll use for this. So I'll turn on the uh, transmitter, and the very first thing I need to do is set up a new um, model. So you see here, I have the MCPX2 uh, uh, set up here. And if I go to model select, you can see uh, I have a Taro 450 model. I have a SIM model, but what I don't have is my Taro 500 model. So I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and put that in position four. All right, sorry, I moved it to get rid of all that reflection that you were seeing uh, in the background of this display. So anyway, um, you may not need uh, to, to know this, but for those of you, it's your first time setting up a heli. I'm going to go ahead and go through what I need to do to set this up real quick. It's really easy. Um, basically, um, what I need to do is identify a name for my model. So I'm going to go to Setup List, uh, select Model Type. The default model type is uh, generally uh, a plain mode, so I'm just going to move it over to Heli. Now I'm going to go down to Model Name. And... Uh, Okay, so now it's set for a Taro 500, which is what it is. Um, we'll definitely be playing with reverse. Right now we want swash type, and we want to set this to CCPM 120 degree. Uh, the reason we want to set that to a 120 is we're only using the receiver uh, to control the cyclic servos. 
Um, if you're using a fly barless system that controls those cyclic servos, uh, instead of uh, basically getting the controls directly from the transmitter, you may end up setting this at uh, at a 90 degree. So just just to be clear, I'm using a fly barless build with with uh, no uh, no gyro um, on the cyclics. So I need to set it for a CCPM 120. All right, now what we want to do is go in and uh, check our swash mix uh, just to make sure that we have that uh, where we want it. So I'm going to go down uh, and basically I just got out, uh, went back to the main menu. Uh, it was the easiest way um, for me. But uh, now you can go down here and see the swash mix. To start out, I'm going to start out with 60% 60, uh, 60 all the way through just to make sure that's what it is. Um, the other thing I want is... Um, I want to make sure my sub trims are all zero, which they are, um, because I'm going to be adjusting that um, as I go. But uh, I want to make sure that it's ready to go. And then travel adjustments, I want all those at 100% uh, in all directions. So a great tip I got when uh, it comes to setting up your uh, your servos, whether it's uh, looking for center to set your 90s or if you're doing some swash leveling, uh, one of the things you want to do is ensure that your stick is at directly mid stick for these operations. Um, so one thing you can do here, which is uh, which is kind of interesting, is uh, cheat a little bit with your pitch curve. Uh, and basically, on your normal position, which is uh, what I'm using to set up my uh, my servos, instead of having a linear pitch curve, right where you can see where my throttle position um, uh, goes up and down. Uh, in a linear fashion, in order to get mid stick, I've got to get that exactly uh, centered, uh, you know. And I can use the the line here to indicate where my center is, uh, but that may or may not be exactly precise. And there's a little bit of opportunity for variance there. Um, so one trick that uh, somebody shared with me on my uh, on my YouTube channel, uh, which I was very appreciative of, is to go in and actually just Make some adjustments to your uh, pitch curve so that you have a very wide spectrum of center. So basically, I'm going to go to position 2, make that 50, go to position 4, drop that down to 50, and uh, you'll see now what I've got is uh, position low is 0, and then I'm 50 for three positions, and then position high is 100%. What that means is I've got a lot of room to be in the center, exactly 50% throttle, um, and I can have my stick quite a bit off center in either direction. So it's a really great way if you're setting up just to make sure that you're dead sticked. Um, now, you wouldn't fly it this way, of course, but it, it, it is a handy trick for setting up. So I uh, really appreciate that, uh, that tip, and thanks for who sent that to me. That's what you need to do, basically, uh, to set this up. Now what I need to do is bind um, this receiver um, to, the, uh, to the transmitter, and uh, let's go through that process now. All right, so uh, you might know this, you might not. I'll just say it anyway. Uh, with the... Uh, the Spectrum DX6i, uh, which is the uh, transmitter I'm using, there is the model match uh, recognition system, which means not only are you binding the the receiver to a specific transmitter, you're also binding it to a specific model. So we had to build the model first, so that when we bind it, uh, then it gets bound to that model. That way, if we're not set up in the in the 500, let's say I'm on the 450 settings, and I power up the 500 it's not going to recognize that it's been bound and it will stay in fail-safe mode. And uh, that's another important thing we'll talk about when we, uh, we talk about binding is how to ensure your fail-safe. Uh, and basically, the way to do that is make sure your stick is in the down position, your throttle stick, um, whenever you go through the bind process. Because with these Spectrum receivers, if they lose connection, with the transmitter for whatever reason, whether it's not powered on uh, at the time the heli's powered on or you, you go out of range, the fail safe is whatever position your stick is in when you bind. So we have our, uh, our receiver and I'm going to take the bind plug and basically 
I'm going to stick it in this very first uh, hole. It says right there, uh, bat bind. So that's where we're going to put it. And basically what the bind plug is, is a, a jumper. Basically jumps the two outside pens. Um, that's, that's pretty much all it does. So again, I show you how to make one of these if you don't have one. And uh, go look at my 450 build videos, uh, Electronics Extravaganza. I think maybe Volume 1 or Volume 2 I get into binding. So uh, check that out if you, if you need that information. But anyway, get the bind plug in there. And uh, I am going to turn my transmitter off because I need to, uh, I need to have it off whenever I, I start this process. The next thing I want to do is plug in my uh, ESC. And uh, you can see here um, I do have a throttle. Uh, uh, port and this is going to go with the uh, the ground the black wire uh, on my ESC is going to go down uh, towards the bottom uh, of the receiver so just like that white will be towards the inside red is the hot black is the ground white is the uh, the control um, so uh, that's how that's going to go uh, usually on the receivers, there is something that denotes um, what the pin configuration is. I don't see it on this one, which is I find very interesting, actually. Um, let me look at my other, my uh, AR6210. So here's the 6210 I have, and you can see here denotes what pin is, is what. So mine is positive and then the control. I don't see that on this, but it's going to be the same uh, as this. So minus positive control. So that means your black uh, is going to go, um, you know, towards this outside edge. All right, so that's ready to go. Okay, power's off on the transmitter. The throttle stick is in the low position, which is my fail-safe position. Uh, I've got everything ready to go for the uh, transmitter. When I power it on. I get the orange blinky light, which tells me I'm in bind mode. And it does that because it recognizes that these two pins have been jumped. And then from here, I need to hold on to the trainer switch on my transmitter. Get out of the way for you. I uh, pull up on that as I power it on. I can see here I have bind on the indicator. Um, my uh, light flash went to a slower flash. Now I let go of the trainer switch, I have a solid light. And then basically from here what I want to do is just pull out that bind plug and then lock that in. And uh, that's basically the process of binding a, uh, a receiver. So let's go ahead and bind my satellite while I'm at it. So I'm going to turn off the power to my radio. Pull the power from the uh, receiver. And I'm just going to do... Uh, Add in my satellite. Put my bind plug back in. All right, so now I have my uh, satellite connected. Uh, bind uh, plug is still in, or back in. Uh, and basically what I'm gonna do is redo the same process, but I'm gonna show you how the satellite will bind as well, along with the uh, the standard receiver um, and uh, again double checking my transmitter power off stick in low position when I apply power I see both uh, both lights now blinking orange indicating bind mode and then I'm going to activate the trainer switch as I power on double checking that throttle power on you can see here I'm in bind um, once I start getting a different flash and I get a solid, I can let go of the switch. I uh, should have a solid light on both uh, of these uh, receivers. And then just pull out your bind plug. That just locks everything in place and you're good to go. So that is basically uh, setting up the, uh, the receivers and now we can uh, start using them to, uh, to power our servos. All right, so this doesn't have to be really pretty. Uh, we just got to get some power to these guys um, so that we can start uh, figuring out which direction they're going to be. And then from there, we can, uh, we can do our process of setting the 90. Um, so basically, what I'm going to do is just take my receiver and start connecting up my 
aileron and my elevator and my, in this case, aux channel, um, which would be the pitch. So it does not really matter how you plug them up um, because we can make the changes um, in the transmitter. So, uh, you know, I, I think, you know, obviously with the, uh, the elevator, you're going to want that one to have its own particular spot, which is the elev. Uh, brown is going to point uh, in the same uh, fashion as the black towards the outside because that's the, uh, the ground side. Uh, and then now I'm going to take the right one and make it the aileron and the left one and make it aux one. All right, that's good. What that leaves me open is rudder and gear and uh, the bat bind uh, plug. So that's pretty much what you should have uh, right there. At least at this point. Okay, so I'm gonna let these things hang. And uh, now what I wanna do is apply um, some power. Uh, I wanna turn on my transmitter. Make sure that's on the right model that we just bound, the Tarot 500 model. Um, and uh, I'm going to put my uh, stick in the low position for now, but eventually we're going to change that. And then I'm going to apply power. You see I've got um, power to my receiver. And you can't tell it right now, but my servos are all uh, powered up. All right, so now I need to make sure I have my uh, throttle position and mid stick. Again, the way I have that set up, I've got a lot of room. You can hear, listen. I get all the way down here before I get any servo movement. And all the way up to the top here. So pretty much anything in there, the servo considers it's the middle, uh, which is pretty cool. So I'm just going to get it there, set it in the middle, uh, and I can set that aside. And now what I have are these three servos. Um, sitting in what they consider to be their middle position with zero sub trim. Now what we do is we figure out uh, how to get a 90. So I like to start out with this particular arm, uh, just a plain straight arm, and see how close I can get with it. Um, and uh, I'm going to tip this kind of sideways to show you what I'm looking at. And what I'm looking at is seeing how close this looks too straight across and I can't seem to avoid getting it in the same slot every time. So this one definitely would not work uh, right there. That's that's as close, uh, which is not close enough for me. Um, let me try this same arm on another servo. And in this case you want the servo arms pointing backwards. That's pretty miserable, actually. I wish it was closer. So that servo arm doesn't play nice with either of those two. Uh, real quick, let's just check it um, with this guy in the back here. Now for the back servo, you're going to have it pointing back towards the front of the heli. Will be the uh, the centered position. And I'm looking now, I'm looking through the hole there. And this is a game of just trial and error. So none of those uh, servos played nicely with this arm. Uh, so let me, uh, let me try a different arm here. And this is generally the one that ends up being the easiest to play with. Is one of these, uh, wow that one's pretty good right there. Uh, one of these arms with, with multiple um, arms. So that, uh, by golly, is pretty darn good for a 90. Now, you've seen me use tools to get this done. Um, I'm going to take the eyeball approach to this because I know that a lot of people do that. And basically what I'm just looking for is, uh, is how the ends of these servo uh, arms align like between the two screw holes. 
and uh, you know align towards the center uh, of the uh, of the servo, and then when it points out, um, is it looking like it's uh, fairly level? So you can get a pretty good indicator of uh, of how close it is just by eyeballing it. Right now, I just want to get one that's fairly close, and it looks like that's going to be the one for me. So I'm going to leave that one on there, and uh, let me go around and uh, grab another one of those bad boys. I'm just going to make this easy on myself. I mean, every servo comes with a little bag of goodies like this. And some, uh, some work great for some applications, and some work great for other applications. So, basically, I'm just going to look for the one that lines up the best. That looks pretty darn good there. All we have to do is get it as close as we can, and then we can we can take out the rest of the uh, the variance by sub trim. That's what sub trim is for. And I think that one looks the best, so I'm going to leave that right there. And uh, let's go back and look at this rear one. I'm going to try this other arm on the rear one, just to see if I can get it close with an arm. Nope, doesn't want to play nice with me. That's alright, because I have got all kinds of options. In fact, I'm going to go, all right, let's just pull this bad boy out, see how close we can get. And basically, I'm just looking through this little hole here. That's definitely the cool thing about this build versus uh, the smaller framed helis like the 450, is uh, you have a lot more room to work and uh, a lot more room to see what you're doing. There's no way I could do this process with mounted servos on the 450. I think that's going to be the best shot right there. Um, so that's the servo um, arms that I'm going to use and the position I'm going to use. So now we need to figure out if everything's pointed in the right direction. Uh, because that will make a difference on our final final setup. So when I move these up and down, I'm looking at how they interact uh, with one another. I want them all working together. That's my first goal is get them working together. So right now when I'm at full low throttle, uh, this one goes up. This one goes up. I'm looking at, at the direction this, this forward facing arm is going, but this one goes down. If I go full up, uh, this one goes down. This one goes down. And this one uh, goes up, so they're not working together. So don't pay attention to whether up or down. It's just are they working together? So it, it's like that old game. Which one of these things is different than the other? So I've got three servos. Two of them are going to be working in the same direction. One of them is going to be backwards. Or you might get lucky and they're all working in the same direction. Uh, but in my case, one of them is backwards, uh, and uh, so. This one's pointed down, that one's pointed down, this one's pointed up. This guy does not fit the others, so I'm going to go in and uh, reverse that servo so it's playing nicely. So going into my, uh, my setup here, uh, and I'm just going to basically go down to uh, setup list. And then when I get in here, I have a reverse section. Reverse, and I need to figure out which one I'm going to reverse. It's this one right here. So I'm going to trace this wire down, and that's the one I have plugged into the uh, aileron. Okay. So I have that servo there uh, identified. Oops. We go to that. One. Hit reverse, and back out of there. So now they're all playing nice. All right. So when I when I move the stick up and down, 
they all move in unison, okay, which is what I want. So I'm looking at the, uh, the rear-facing uh, arms on the front ones and the forward-facing arm on the rear one. Now it's backwards from what I need it to be because if I push it up, they're down. If I pull it down, they go up. But that's okay. They're working together, so that's what I want to do. The, uh, the reversal, I only want to get them playing nice. Where I fix the, uh, the direction will be in the swash mix. So go to model select. Swash mix. So as you can see, my swash mix, I have it at all of them at plus 60, which is where we set it. What I want to do is, basically, I want to reverse the pitch. So when I go up, it goes down. When I go down, it goes up. The way I fix that is to go in and change this pitch mix. And as I spin it down, you can hear and see those servos uh, reversing direction. All three of them are working together. Let me make sure I get that at 60. Save it. And uh, now, when I go up, they go up. When I go down, they go down. And they're all together. So now what I need to do is figure out if uh, the left and right movements are correct. So I'm going to set this uh, kind of like this so you can see. And, uh, and now I'm going to be using this stick. So, if you consider that my hand would be the swatch plate sitting on top, when I move this stick, uh, the, the, uh, the right stick to the right, I want that swatch to tilt like this. When I move it to the left, I want it to tilt like this. When I push it forward, I want it to go forward like this. When I pull it backwards, I want it to pull back like that. So, you have to visualize that as you look at these three positions. And again, I'm looking at these rear-facing arms and then this forward-facing arm um, because those are the ones that, um, that I'm concerned with. So whenever I move the stick to the right, I look at the movement and it actually looks like it's going the way I want it. This one is going down, this one is going up, which is going to push the swash in that direction. If I move the stick to the right, like that, I get the opposite effect. This one's going down, that one's going up, which is going to tilt my swash uh, in the correct direction. If I push forward, I am also getting what I want, which is these front ones go down, the back one goes up, okay? So that's going to push the swash forward, which is going to push the helicopter forward. If I pull back, the exact opposite happens. These two are going up. This one is, the rear one's going down. So I've made all of the adjustments I need to make to get the servos all working in the right direction, which is what I want. Now, if something didn't work right, uh, let's say you, uh, you went left uh, instead of right whenever you move the stick in, in whatever direction, you would go in and adjust this, uh, this ALA mix, right? So if, if the side to side is backwards, it's the aileron. Take that from minus or from plus 60 to a minus 60. If the elevation uh, was backwards where it tilted forwards when you want it to tilt back, go and adjust elevator, make that minus 60. Uh, it wouldn't be uncommon to have all three of these at minus 60. It wouldn't be uncommon to have them all at plus 60. It just so happens mine is plus 60, plus 60, minus 60. That's where we're going to start. That's our baseline, our starting point. We'll, we'll fine-tune this when we get into our head setup. But for now, we just want to get all the servos in the right direction and working in the right order. Um, that way, um, when we do our final uh, uh, head setup and getting our, our, uh, our arms locked into place, we know exactly where they're going to be. So I'm back at mid-stick, and what I want to do is just take a look at my arms again and make sure that they still look like they're fairly well lined up just like they were when I started. When you start mixing, messing with reversing servos, there's a chance that the alignment could be off a little bit from where you expected it to be. So everything looks good there. All right, so now that we have our servos set up the way we want, we're ready to finish the actual servo uh, arm installation. That's gonna also require 
putting your um, servo balls um, onto the arms. Now the manual has a recommendation and I'm going to go with it and that is a recommendation of using a hole that is 16 to 16.5 millimeters from center. So if you look at your servo arms, I'm going to be looking for the hole that is closest to 16 to 16.5 millimeters. Uh, and then uh, and that's where I'm going to actually place my my ball. Now, I'm going to go ahead and take these arms off, but I don't want to have to go through this whole struggle of figuring out which arm I was going to use uh, on which uh, uh, on each servo. So what I'm going to do, just to make sure I know which is which, just take a Sharpie, right? And I'm just going to make a line through those holes. It's a black on black line, but I know it's there. So when I pull this off uh, so that I can mount my ball, I don't have to worry about later on which arm I was planning on using. I can just take a, a look at that subtle mark, that black mark there, and go, oh, that's the one I'm using. So uh, it's a great way to, uh, to mark your, your arm uh, as you begin to work on it. Now when you mount these balls uh, on these, these uh, left and right servos, the ball is going to be pointing in towards the heli. Um, so, um, unlike the 450 build I did, the balls were pointing out. This one, the balls are going to point in. So don't forget that. Pointing in and uh, in that 16 to 16.5 millimeter hole. Um, we're going to do that. And we're also going to put a nut uh, on the back side of that uh, to hold that down. So let me figure out which hole I'm going to use for mounting. Alright, so I've got to ignore my display. My display is all jacked up where uh, it skips like five millimeters on the display so it's all right it's got a standard ruler on there so I've got it set for 16 millimeters and basically what I want to do now is identify which of these holes and again looking for the arm that I'm using looking for that black uh, black mark there it is uh, I want to find out which one is closest to 16 to 16 and a half I'm at 16 and uh, it looks like it's going to be that end hole. If I bump it out just a little bit more to the half mark, which uh, is going to be probably right about there. You can see I'm pretty much there. So that's the hole I'm going to use, the outside hole. I'm assuming the outside hole on all of these is the same. Yeah. So I'm going to take that information and uh, all four of these stars, I'm just going to put the, uh, the servo uh, balls on the, uh, on the outside hole. So you want to flip it over upside down. Remember, you want this thing pointed in towards the frame. Make sure you find your mark if you made one. There's my mark, so I know this is the arm. Flip it over and a uh, little bit of downward pressure to get it started. And once it gets started, you should be able to thread it through pretty easy. It gets all the way through. I want to apply thread lock uh, and put a nut on. So thread lock will eat plastic. Uh, so in this case, what I'm going to do, just to keep me from getting it all over the servo arm, is uh, I'm going to use a toothpick and uh, just put the thread lock inside my uh, my nut here. Just get it in there. Oh, that way I'm not pouring it all over this plastic servo arm. Get it threaded on there. All right, and snug it down. So there we go. All right, now that I have this uh, set up, <clears throat> I'm just gonna go ahead and mount it uh, on the heli, pulling it, putting it right back on the servo that I pull it off of, because it should be pretty easy to get realigned uh, back to that close to 90 position. I still have the, uh, the servos powered up. Uh, you can see here my, uh, my light is on uh, for my uh, receiver and my stick is at mid-stick. 
So that allows me to get it back uh, where it needs to go. Again, the ball facing in and is at 16 and a half millimeters from the center point. Uh, and now that I have that, I can uh, go ahead and put in my screw uh, in my uh, servo uh, bag. I have this screw here. Uh, I'm going to put some thread lock on it. All right, got it wet with a little bit of thread lock, not a whole lot uh, of excess. And I'm just going to screw it down. Snug it up, and uh, and that's that one. So now we'll uh, we'll knock out these uh, these next two the same way. So. Uh, arm, but this time the ball is going to be facing out from the servo. Okay, so this is different than the uh, the right and left servos. And you can see how it now points that ball is going to line up with your center line. Okay, point it out and uh, away from the servo and forward. And uh, just got to lock that guy down. So I'll just go right through the other servo hole. Get that tightened down. Okay. So now my servo arms are all mounted and uh, and basically what I need to do now is just double check and make sure that I don't need to use any sub trim. So taking a look at these servos, uh, this, uh, this big star wheel is great, or star arm, whatever you want to call it, horn, uh, is great for being able to check because you can look for symmetry in the different areas. So. My eye says that's pretty darn good. I'm going to leave that one alone. Let me flip this one over. Again, I'm looking for symmetry. And uh, I think this one could, could see a little bit of adjustment. So remembering which one that's plugged into, uh, that is my aileron uh, servo. So let me go to the transmitter now. So when I take go to my transmitter, get back to the main setup list, and I want to go to adjust list. So in the adjust list, I want to go to sub trim. And the sub trim aileron, that's the one I'm messing with. So as I move this, you can see how it affects the servo. And what I'm looking for is as much symmetry as I can get. Remember, my stick is at mid-stick, so I'm centered according to, uh, to the transmitter. I think that's pretty good right there. That looks pretty symmetrical there. I think I'm going to go with that. That ends up being uh, 15 clicks of, uh, of sub trim there. So I'm going to lock that in. And uh, now we'll look at the elevator servo. And uh, again here I'm looking for symmetry in how it lines up. And I'm just looking through the other servo mounting hole. Looks like I could budge just a touch. Looks like it's pointed a little bit that way, not much. So I'm going to take the uh, transmitter and go to the elevator. 
and when I change it you can see how it impacts if I move it that much uh, that's five move my stick up and down to kind of get it moving see where it settles I think that looks pretty good so let me lock that in All right, so you can see here what I ended up with was a uh, 5 uh, on the elevator and a 15 on the aileron. And uh, now all of my servos uh, have been 90'd. And I'm ready to move on with the, uh, the next part of the build. So everything's looking good. I'm pretty happy with it so far. Uh, wish I didn't have to go hunt down uh, screws and washers. I feel like I'm missing a bag somewhere, so uh, I'll probably, uh, I don't know if, I'll, if it'll turn up later or not. But at any rate, uh, there we go. We've got these servos on and, uh, and ready to be uh, set up with the head. Now I do have these uh, corners of the arms I'm not using. Uh, I don't know if they're going to be in the way or not with the canopy. I'm going to go ahead and leave them on for now. If I find out that any of them get in the way of the canopy, I'll just snip them off with, uh, with some cutters. Uh, but I'm just going to leave them on for now. I'm not sure if they're in the way or not. So I'm going to approach it as if they're not going to be in the way uh, until shown otherwise. So that's that. Uh, servos. Thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one.